right, let's go. Take it easy. It's a long way to the next water. Well, maybe we ought to wait and give him a chance. We've been holed up a week. That's chance enough. He's running out on us. Money in his saddlebags will ease your conscience, Frank, and a two-way split will make it feel even better. Now. You! Shot nothing but holes in the sky. I meant to. You'll feel different with a fistful of money in your jeans. Sure. Just don't ride behind me, Largo. That stage coming, Mr. Morgan. Well, your guess is as good as mine. It's four hours late already. Uh, getting on any gonna cut the breeze down, man. Senator Blakely over there, he brings his own. He's going along too. Uh -oh. Just can't seem to get away from the wind today, huh? Well, uh, maybe the senators ain't so full of sand. I know her. I can assure you, good people of Christian's flat, that we in Washington are aware of your problems out here. You have our sympathy. But we don't have your soldiers, Senator, to drive the Indians out of the territory. Soldiers are not the answer, sir. The answer is a better understanding. Your troubles out here will be settled when the Indians and the white men put aside their differences. You mean when the Indians run the whites out of the territory? Just look at Christian Flats. Those redskins have made a ghost town out of it. Oh, now, my dear sir, you must real... Mademoiselle? Yes, Giselle. If you want my advice, I, I think we should go back to New York where there are sidewalks and where the men do not look at you as if they were hungry. Giselle, I do not pay you to give me advice. I pay you to hook up my dresses. Now go back to the hotel and stay with the luggage. Oh, c'est impossible. Well, Mr. Morgan? No cancellations yet, ma'am. But I told you, I've got to get to Laramie. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but without space on the stage, I can't sell tickets to anyone. Well, I don't happen to be just anyone. Oh, you sure don't, miss. There's only one Amy Clark from New York to Frisco. <laughs> I remember you from Abilene. You and Sam had a good thing there. Well, that's open to debate. Didn't you and Sam ever get married? No, he proposed, but he didn't wait for an answer. Oh, he was a fool not to take you for his bride. Sam wasn't a fool. He took me for something else. $27,700.20, to be exact. Oh, that's why he was in such a big hurry. He came through here a few days ago on his way to Laramie. You going to meet him? Yes, I'm going to meet him. I'm looking forward to it. You see, that's why I've got to get on the stage, Mr. Morgan. You simply must find a way to squeeze me in. 
Oh, it's going to be awful hot and crowded on that stage. And besides, what can I tell the other passengers? Tell them to use cologne before they leave here. Speaking of cologne... I'll bet you don't remember this. Aveline. Uh-huh. <laughs> you tossed them to the crowd while you did your song and dance. Oh, worthless Joe, you handsome devil, you're the one who was to blame. <laughs> Night of February the 10th. <clears throat> Lilac perfume still lingers. You're putting too much strain on your imagination. Here. I'll give you a, a fresh one for the ticket. Uh, how many do you want? Three. My maid and minstrel, my accountant, are with me. It's going to be awful crowded on that stage if I can't talk somebody out of going. Besides, what if Sam ain't in Laramie? Oh, if he's not there, he'll be someplace. I'll find him. How much do I owe you? Uh, it'll be $15, and the, never mind the sales. <sighs> there is no problem that cannot be solved at a conference table. All that is necessary is to sit down, man to man, face to face, and talk these problems out. If I had my way, I would go back to Washington and insist that every senator, every congressman, visit your beautiful country here and see in person the problems that you people are faced with every day. Believe me, gentlemen, I know whereof I speak. <laughs> Are you hurt, miss? No. Only my feelings, Senator. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Hamilton, ma'am. John Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, you look mighty done in, mister. Walk fur? About 40 miles. Somebody stole your horse? Shot out from under me. Is that so? I need one that's got some get up and go in it. Well, I got a mighty fine animal inside, mister. Never been known to spook. This here's a carriage horse, mister. Only critter in town for sale. Bet you have him for 40 bucks. Divide by two. Mister, you ring my heart. 20 bucks, take it or leave it. Good teeth, sound the limbs, no bruises. And there ain't no bruises on these either. I'll take it. Would have sold him for 10. You just did. <clears throat> did. You get these two in a swap? Nah, I wouldn't own them. They're plumb blowed out. Ain't fit for hat racks. Where are the two men that own them? Over in the hotel. One of them got bottle fever, threw away the cork. If you ask me, you'll have the beezy wheezies for six days. Is there a barber shop in town? Nope. Ain't enough business to pay a man to heat up the water. You mind if I wash up? Not if the horses don't. <laughs> As I was saying, gentlemen, you'll see the time when these plains of yours will be dotted with peaceful farms, prosperous farms, we have no wheat, we have no oats, we have no corn to feed our shoats. Have you no respect for a United States Senator, sir? You're keeping the two-party system alive, Senator. My opinion against yours. <laughs> There's a good answer for you, Senator. <laughs> Minstrel. Now, there's a lady with a queenly bearing. Yes, sir. And I'd sure like to be king. <laughs> Anything wrong, Miss Amy? Yes, the bartender told me Sam is headed for Canada. Well, then he won't be staying in Laramie very long. I know, that's why we've got to get there before he leaves. Hey, lady. I bet you and me have a little drink together. Mister, it ain't healthy to jump over the wrong fences. Can I uh, help you, ma'am? Oh, uh, yes. Do you run this livery stable? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, would you have any horses for sale or a rig to rent? No, ma'am. I just sold the last one to a fellow out back. Oh. Uh, do you suppose he'd be willing to sell it to me? It won't hurt to ask you. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. It's all right. I usually stand up when a lady walks in. You mind if I don't this time? Please don't bother. I came to buy your horse. <laughs> You're sure going to be the best dressed rider in these parts and all that fall to all. I have to get to Laramie. So do I. I'll give you $50. Ma'am, if I walked in on you in a tub, I sure wouldn't be talking about horses. I'll make that 75 Save your money, ma'am. Why don't we just ride double? Look, I need this horse. And if you were a gentleman... Which I'm not. Now, do you mind if I go ahead and wash? Not at all. While you're at it, why don't you wash this, too? If it can stand the shock. Son, you just made yourself a powerful friend. <laughs> Frank, you picked up a couple of slugs. Did I? Yeah, if he's been a mite higher, you'd be dead. Somebody thought I was. famous Amy Clark, close to the West. Have you ever been West before, Senator? No, this is my first venture. See, Congress is adjourned for the summer, and you might call this a trip without portfolio. In my small way, I'm trying to unite our peoples, the Indians and the whites. I hope your scalp is glued on tight. Have you ever met an Indian face to face? Only in a literary sense. You see, I happen to be a student of anthropology. So was General Custopher. Didn't help him very much. Can I help you, mister? Are these two men still here? This one's upstairs in his room, sleeping it off. The other one's in the bar, playing poker. It's pretty dry around here. Yep. We ain't had any rain around here in a long spell. You found some somewhere. That drink's been watered. Walking 40 miles, a man can get pretty mad, Frank. How you doing with my money? You figured it would lump up better in two piles, huh? A three-way split wasn't good enough for you. What have you got? Still running bad. Look, Largo did it, Johnny. Honest, it wasn't me, it was him. You could have stopped him. Well, he said you were figuring on giving it to us in the back. I was riding up front. Remember? 
Look, if you think I did it, why don't you shoot me? My gun's empty. I'm out of cartridges. This would be the right time. Go ahead. You always did have a white flag handy. This time you haven't got one. Not in here, boys. Please, not in here. It breaks things up too much. And don't holler to Largo for help. Try riding it out alone this time. It's going to be a gunfight. My parasol, Giselle. Care to join me and watch it, Senator? All right, Frank. You're faster than I am, and you know it. Then we'll make it Queensberry. Start walking and count to ten. And try not to deal off at the bottom of the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! <laughs> What are you waiting for? Go ahead, shoot! You shouldn't have missed, Frank. I've got a free one coming. I'll take it my own time. You be on the watch out for it. Bring his horse. Keep riding, Frank. And don't ever let me find you. So long, boy. Someday I hope you can grow a backbone. Hello, Largo. I didn't figure to smoke you out so soon. What's the bottle doing out here? Liquid incentive. Winner take all. Guess we won't be needing this. No, no, no. Leave it there. Me and Mr. Banner do our best talking over a bottle. Do as he says. Leave it there. What kind is it, Johnny? Old Kentuck. 90 proof. You as thirsty as I am? Yeah, we'll see about that. That was a good horse you killed, Largo. I didn't mean it to be him. I know. You're still playing the safe odds, aren't you? What's so safe about standing up to you? I've got one bullet in my gun. You've got six. Five. No, 
not all savages paint their faces and wear eagle feathers. Look, he's alive! Never knew a man to fall for the same possum trick twice. Four flusher. Charity case. Nothing but charity cases. Who's gonna pay for this man's burial? You'll find $300 in your best pocket. Take out for his funeral and send the rest to his nearest relative. Nearest relative, huh? Nephew, you just found yourself an uncle. Keep the rest or bury it with Larson. to a man who left town in a hurry. See if they get on the next stage east. That'll be about three dollars. Where'd you get it? The lady. I'll eat my own goose fried and fish oil if she didn't take it off her leg and give it to me. So help me. Did you ever play high card draw? Look, this cost me two dollars. I'll play you for the mate, double or nothing. Miss Clark, is this man bothering you? No, I think I bother him. <laughs> well, I'd hope to walk off a high cliff, ma'am, if you didn't bother me. How about it? Double or nothing? Solitaire means by oneself. The game was the lady's choice. Why don't you leave her alone? Maybe the lady doesn't want to be left alone. Sir, you should be keen for your insolent presumption. Say, did you know your hat was on crooked? By design. Where is your respect for womanhood? Lost in the shuffle with a lot of other things. Senator, I appreciate your interest, but I don't need any help. Thank but you. Miss Clark, this man is a... Run along. This is my brand of politics. I know it backwards. Did anyone ever tell you you were pretty? Like to count the notches on my bracelet? <laughs> and you got fire, too. And I like fire. I like to see how close to it I can stand without getting singed. Any sign of the stage yet? I think it's coming by way of Cape Horn. Did you come to horsewhip the villain? To save the fair lady? I'm no hero, friend. I'd be a fool to let chivalry carry me off in a box. It's only a real scared man who stands up and shouts how brave he is. How brave are you without your gun? Would you really like to know? I really would. You are pretty. You're very pretty. And I'll bet there are men that would walk a hundred miles just to give you a kiss. And maybe I would too. But today I've already walked my distance.
Didn't like it. You can cancel any chance it'll happen again. You knew it wasn't loaded. So did you. Only a fool gives a woman a loaded gun. Just a moment ago, you referred to me as a lady. In the future, please remember that I happen to be one. No woman just happens to be a lady. There's some work at it harder than others. <laughs> Use a drink. We'll fight it together. You uh, caught a woman pretty roughly. It's <laughs> her style, too. She didn't bat an eye. In a state of shock, people feel no pain. <laughs> I warned her it was coming. She didn't even try to get out of the way. I wonder. <laughs> Suppose she liked it. Why ask me? You kissed her. Didn't it tell you anything? I don't know. It was sort of one of those get away closer sort of things. It's not very sociable, but I've got a gun aimed right at your belly. I was about to say the same thing. But on second thought, you'd be no good to me dead. Dead or alive, you seem to show an uncommon interest in every move I make. Now, I want to know why. Who are you? My name is John Hamilton. It's a nice name, but it doesn't tell me much, does it? Are you the law? No. Prove it. Take everything out of your pockets and lay them up on the table. This will identify me. Followed me clear across the territory. $500 reward for the capture of John Carter, Mr. Bank Cashier, one for the robbery of the... the Fallbrook Bank. You did the job and I got credit for it. Now I remember you. You're the bank cashier. <laughs> well, the whiskers fool me, Carter. Hamilton's the name. Don't forget it. What are you doing here? When a bank cashier is alone and a bank is robbed, sometimes it's pretty hard to convince the owners that he didn't do it himself. You see, I had no witnesses. <laughs> I was a witness. That's why I want to take you back to Fallbrook alive. You gave me a few bad moments out there in the street. <laughs> you saw yourself stuck with a corpse, huh? <laughs> well, why didn't you just tell the sheriff he didn't do it? He didn't believe me, naturally. Naturally. Well, neither do I. But you know, I'm glad I ran into you. Now I can stop running. It's you they're chasing. I don't know yet how I'll do it. But I'm going to turn you over to the law somewhere. And I'm going to wring a confession out of you. <laughs> the closest law is in Laramie. But getting me to talk, that's going to be quite a trick. You know you're worth $500. I might just turn you over to the law and collect the money. That's a chance I'll have to take. Hey, Falk! Stage! Here comes the stage! The last Terry Nelson. <laughs> Well, I can guarantee you one thing, Mr. Hamilton. What's that? If you do take the pelt in, it'll have a hole in it. You'd be no good to me that way. I want you alive. <laughs> Anything wrong, Senator? Wrong? Go see for yourself.
Cheyenne. How do you feel about the Indians now? Why don't you get up on your soapbox and tell us how misunderstood they are? I'm just as shocked as you, Miss Tark. But perhaps this incident was provoked. Provoked? By the little girl who owned this? They struck back the only way they knew. These things are bound to happen. Until we can find a common ground, a common language. You can't kill an Indian with words. Never underestimate the power of words, Miss Clark. It only takes one word to start a war. Charge. And also a single word to end one. Armistice. Have you found the words to end this one? I pray to God that I may find them. I know how you folks must feel. You'll get your money back. Refund, Senator? My ticket entitles me to go to Laramie. I think my intentions are sufficiently clear. How about you, Miss Clark? Refund? I'm going. Minstrel, help Giselle with the bag. By golly, if you ain't afraid, ma'am, I ain't either. I'm not going, Mademoiselle. But I need you, Giselle. I had no heart for this trip. Now I have less. I'm returning east. But you can't leave me now. Who'll hook me up? Mademoiselle, there are no hooks and eyes on the shroud. Au revoir. And if you overtake Monsieur Sam, tell him he still owes me fifty dollars. Au revoir. Bet if you could speak French, ma'am, that air turned blue. You're all forgetting one thing. I ain't got a driver and I'm short a horse. You have a horse. And you're pretty brave with an empty gun. Why don't you load it, and then we'll see how brave you really are. The lady's in a fix. She's got nobody to hook up her dress. Do you want to ride shotgun? You don't leave me any choice. Where you go, I go. How about you folks? You going? Better hang on, ma'am. It's going to be a rough trip. Oh, I'll feel quite safe with you up there, Mr. Banner. That could be taken two ways. I meant both of you. Here you are. Take it easy on the downgrade. Don't push your luck too far. All right, stand clear. Thoughts right out on his face where everybody could read him. You'd never believe him if I did. There's one thing for sure. You're not going to Laramie just to turn me in. I'm not a sure thing. Can you think of any other reason for my going? A lady. Am I that obvious? <laughs> no, but she's that smart. She's even got the senator fighting himself. Her and that perfume. Not him. He's a zealot. He's impregnable. Yeah, but the swish of a taffeta skirt can make a man untrack himself pretty fast. And the older he is, the clumsier he gets. 
I admire your courage, Miss Clark. I'll try to match it with my own. Courage isn't what's taking me to Laramie, Senator. Whatever it is, I admire your kind of woman. You know, it may just be possible that the difference in our ages and experiences may have something to do with the difference in our viewpoints. I think I understand your viewpoints, Senator. And age has nothing to do with it. I'm sorry, Mr. Chester, your bag's on my foot. Oh, sure is heavy. <laughs> what do you got in it? Uh, gold ore samples, my friend. Got to find my claim. Yeah, I'm hoping to bring my family out here, then just sit back and take it easy. I'm from Pennsylvania, that's where I'm from. Where are you from, minstrel? You name it, and that's where I'm from. I'm the promised man you ever did see. Is Laramie really worth all the risk? It is to me. Laramie's a rail stop. It's just one jump from California. I'm hoping to buy a little ranch there. Is that why you held up the bank? It seemed like the quickest way for a couple of cowhands to get started. I hope you like ranching, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, a lot could happen before that, Mr. Bennett. I look for it, too. Take it slowly, Minister. It's a long way to Larry. Water. Banner! Banner, stop the stage! What? Something wrong? Yes, there's water dripping in here. How much is left? No more to gallon. We gotta save as much as we can. Give me a knife. Here's an actor. Elsewhere. When it's your picture on the poster, that's going to be a little tough to explain. I'm counting on you to do that. There's a water hole up ahead. We can soak the cask till it swells. Climb in, everybody. having four excited people biting their nails. And you're alive. Well, yeah, we got other troubles, too. We had a visitor while we were back there, and he knows we're out of water. An Indian? Yep. Yeah. Maybe we should turn back. It's no use. If they want us, they'll hit us wherever we are.
Isaac, what's the matter? Somebody's in trouble. He never had a chance. His gun's empty. And you, Mr. Banner, sent him out here. It's murder any way you look at it. It's not the time, Mr. Blakely. Now, the place. If you want to make a speech, go somewhere else. Bring me a shovel. The man who lives by the gun must surely die by it. I told you this wasn't the time. You're pushing me at the wrong time, Blakely. His blood spoiled the water. We can't use it. And it's on your hands, Banner. How could you hate a man so much? I didn't hate him. He was my brother. Senator Blakely, you just saw one of your own kind lying dead back there. How did you like it? I also saw that same dead man try to shoot his own brother in the back. The color of our skin does not give us immunity from barbaric instincts, nor the right to consider ourselves God's privileged children. <laughs> what do them savages know about God? What kind of religion's an Indian God? Well, among other things, the religion of taking only from the land that which is necessary for his survival. The Indian takes his food from the small end of the horn of plenty. The white man spills his from the large end and leaves it to rot upon the ground. Just like a politician spilling words out of the big end. Senator, your horn of plenty is the same at both ends. No small end, none at all. All right, gentlemen, it seems to me we've all made a point. Shall we let it rest there? to lose your balance, Senator. Shaken up a bit. Oh, you better see after him. Oh, Menstrual, you are hurt. No, no, no. Well, you're alive, I hope. You haven't lost me yet. We lost the horses, I'm afraid. They got spooked pretty bad. How are they? They're all right. This leaves us exactly where? Exactly here. With the sun going down. Got to take cover for the night. One thing. Somebody offered me a water drink right now to be the whiskey I'd spit out. Oh, no. Spencer, are you sure you're all right? It depends on how you look at it, Miss Amy. Good thing if you ask me. My luggage is all right. Oh, Menstrual, look at it. It's demolished. 
What was that? Bird call, of course. Sounded like a nightingale. A Cheyenne nightingale in all likelihood. Well, we're not going to wait to find out. Take cover in that dry wash over there. Never mind your luggage and you bring the water cask. It's smashed. There's nothing in it. Then forget it. If there are any Indians around. With the moon this high, it won't make no difference. Anyhow, engines don't need to see. They got an uncanny ear for hearing. They can hear a shadow moving over peach fuzz. Or goosebumps rising on a white man. You talk too much. Let him talk, Mr. Hamilton. I know what may be out there. I think you'd all better get some rest. I'll stand and watch till I get sleepy. A conquest as westward, Senator. Don't get carried away with the wrong tide. You're at a bad age for night crawling. You mistake my intentions, Mr. Banner. I was merely restless. I thought you were. Why should I make excuses to you? I didn't ask for any. Now get on back there and go to sleep. There's that bird again. Any resemblance to a bird ends with a feather. Better take this. We may have sisters. That is not my language, Banner. It's kind of cold on desert at night, Miss Amy. Better move over closer to the fire. Yeah. I can use some of that fire, too. Oh. All right, I'm, I'm getting... Inside my coat, my wife. Will you see to it that she's told? Get yourself killed. It only started again. What a light to work by. Well, that's all right with me. It'll make it easier to see them in case they rush. many men. You know we're out of water. Probably just wait us out.
handle a gun, maybe you can handle a shovel. Getting hot. He needs burying. Senator will help you. Take him down to Wash and bury him. been carrying a lot of nothing around with him. What is it? Iron pyrites. Fool's gold. And sense of buy a wagon load of it. Funny what a man will die for. Are you a night crawler too? Night or day, I never crawled in my life. Not even for a woman. Then why are you staring so hard, Mr. Beth? Just wanted to see how you looked in the morning. Well, now that you've seen, go back where you were. You don't really want me to, do you? When did I invite you here? Christian's Flats. I barely looked at you. Did you ever hear the Bible story about Lot's wife? All she did was turn around to take a little bitty look. She was turned into soft. You know what you were turned into? Ice. Jelly. Only it wouldn't gel. It's too much sugar. With a little more effort, I think I could learn to hate you. I tried that too, but it didn't work. I know what makes you tick. When are you going to find out? You throw all the rules right out the window, don't you? And it's just the way you like it. It's barroom style. Your ego got you into this banner. Fight it, not me. What made you decide to drive the stage? You're dealing. You tell me. Get buried too. Pretty little head of yours wouldn't look so cute with an arrow sticking out of both ears. Now, you were going to tell me, why did I drive the stage to Laramie? Because you ran into something you couldn't quite handle. And you stayed around to have another try at it. Got you sidetracked and you're mad because it did. Bet you broke a lot of hearts in Abilene. You weren't sure that you could cut me down to size, and your conceit forced you to stay with me until you could find out. You're not only pretty, you're smart, too. Can you cook? You've got petticoat fever, haven't you? And you're fighting. Cuts down your speed. You're like a hawk banner. You like to fly free in the breeze. And now you can't. Finally pounced on something that's a little too big for you to get off the ground. Well, I can spread my wings and try. Let go of her, Banner! There's night crawling and there's day crawling. Now, don't do it again. What goes for Blakely goes for you, too. Look, if you feel like fighting, fight the Indians. cents. I was referring to stars, Winston. Not dollars. I'd almost forgotten about Sam. He was my partner, business manager. Is that all? That's all. Funny, I start out chasing Sam in my bankroll. 
wind up in a dry water hole with a thirst in my lungs. Gladly trade that 27,000 right now for 27 swallows of water. Oh, a horse with four good legs. Horses? Them engines must have horses. You're right. What's to prevent us from stealing them? And they probably keep them right on the other side of those rocks. Hamilton! If we can get even one, we can send for help. You take that gun to the left, I'll take the one to the right. See if you can circle around behind them. And don't fire unless you have to. The rest of you keep your eyes peeled. If there's any trouble, holler for help. Let's go. Miss Clark. Amy. I must talk to you. So it's Amy now. I call you father? I'm not a wanted bank cashier. I'm not a murderous gunman. I'm a senator of the United States of America. I have a future. I'm offering to share that future with you. Don't waste your pretty speeches on Miss Clark, Senator. Go back to Washington and talk where it'll do some good. Tell them to send an army out here. Tell them to dig every Indian out from behind every rock and wipe the war paint off his face with a bullet. What are you digging for? Water. There must be some here. This is no creek bed. Banner! Look! You must have sneaked in there and left it during the night. What is it? Water! Ain't enough to float a catfish off a sandbank, but it's water. Why would they leave it out there? To lure us out one by one. It could be our big ticket. Any way we can get it? Might be. Take off your belt, your neckties, your shoelaces, anything we can make a rope out of. You must have a corset string or garter, something we can use. Another. You were bound you'd get it, weren't you? Now that'd be a shame to break up a pair. How about the rest of your petticoat?
Help yourself. Sí. Thanks be to God. I lay odds he was trying to bust a canteen and missed. Hit or miss, he's got us stopped. What do you think will be their next move? They don't need a next move. All they've got to do is sit up there and wait. Without their horses, that's just what they'll do. Taking very good care of you, Miss Amy. I'm working on it. I just looked up at the man and told him we needed water. Real bad. If he don't look back down on me, it's because he's busy somewhere else. If you get around to us, you wait and see. You've never let me down yet, Minstrel. If there's anybody who can fix it with the man, you can. You smashed the wheel that got us into this predicament. Now get us out. You got any suggestions? Besides my running out there to get the canteen and let them see how many holes they can put in me? You once killed a man over a bottle of whiskey. Winner take all. How many Indians would you kill for a canteen of water? Well, that's not the way I look at it. Point is, I don't want them to kill the only real friend I've got. Me. Once we agree. A man's busy summer's else, but he's gaining on us. It's a mighty grist of rain out yonder. I hope he hurries. Water. 
it's out there, just like I said it was water. Get down out of sight. Water? There ain't no engines out there now. It's just a lake, big and blue and wet. There's nothing out there but dry sand. Your eyes are playing tricks on you. There's a lake out there, I tell you. I can almost reach out and touch it. It's a mirage. I don't talk about it anymore. Don't you want us to have water, Banner? If there's a lake out there, bring me some water. It's not a lake, Hamilton. Minstrel's had too much sun. He's seeing things. No, I ain't, Miss Amy. This is the biggest lake you ever did see. I could go out and dip up enough in this for all of us. Give it back to him. Hamilton, don't be a fool. You never even looked out there to see if there was water. You just took Banner's word that there wasn't any. Put on the rifle. The man's out of his mind. That's true. Bring us some water. Minstrel, wait! Minstrel, stop! Where are you going? Minstrel! Minstrel, come back here! Minstrel! Minstrel, Andrew! Go back there! Don't you see it? Minstrel, come back here! Minstrel, come back! Here. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Beautiful water. Wet, clear, and spinning over the sides. Minstrel! Water. Water. I must have spilled. I must have spilled the water. I'm coming. I'm coming. The water. Lots of water. It's so hurry! It's so hurry up! Let me go! I'm just going to get yourself killed! Let me Now, how do you feel about the poor, misunderstood Indian senator? The brothers of the white man. Blood brothers. Blood. Blood, blood. I'm very sorry, Miss Clark. You're very sorry. Is there all you can say? What do we do now, Senator? Keep on turning the other cheek till we're all dead with Indian arrows sticking out this it's this sort of thing I hope to put an end to. This useless haunt and killing on both sides. A few nights ago, you said you wanted to prove yourself. Well, don't wait till we get to Laramie to show me what kind of a man you are. Prove it now. Don't wait to talk to the chiefs. The killers are right out there. Talk peace to them, you... Bumbus. Bullhard. Here. Here's your olive branch. Hold it out to them. See what your stupid, pious ideas get. Go on. Talk to them. Talk to them and see if they'll believe you. See if they'll let us all walk out of here with all of our hair. I would have chosen a different time, Miss Clark. But a man who preaches peace must practice it. An ideal isn't worth a penny if it isn't put to work.
No gunfire, if you please, Mr. Banner. Your way has failed. I'd like to try mine. Senator Blakely! Senator Blakely! Indian brothers, Indian brothers, hear me! Hear me! I extend my hand to you in friendship. Soon I go to the tents of your many chiefs to speak of peace and smoke the pipe in everlasting brotherhood. The promises I make you will be honored. If you will allow us to go in peace and safety, then my mission can be fulfilled. And once again, you can lay aside your war drums and return to your families, raise your corn, and hunt your buffalo. Tell me that my words are not blown away with the wind. Tell me that I am heard. Tell me that you will leave here now in peace and go to your village. Speak to me, Indian brothers, so that I may know, so that I may... Miss Clark, words aren't enough, or perhaps they just didn't understand. He really believed what he said. Enough to die for it. I killed him. And it wasn't a clean kill. It was dirty. We should be proud of ourselves, Bennett. I guess he just took his case to the wrong people. Us. Them. strength. For what? Doesn't take strength to die. I didn't have enough of that, did I, Banner? I was taking you in. So, uh, I'll die. You heard my epitaph. I'd like to hear my last will and testament. There's plenty of time for talking. Later. running out to John Banner. I bequeath the money he took from the bank. I'll pay that back, every cent of it, to the 
the First National Bank of Fallbrook. I bequeath my good name. Oh, no. I forgot. They already foreclosed on that. I'll get that back for you, too. I'll write a letter as soon as I get to Laramie. Write it here in the sand. Let the wind carry it back to them. We don't get some water and clean it. Infection will spread. Stand up again. Sand. It was just enough water that to drip drives out of my mind. They've got us, haven't they? something out there. I can't tell what it is or where it is. There's still some of them left. We haven't killed them all yet. I still hear something. Why don't you come on out and fight? Come on out and show yourself! Right here. So was the man. But he heard, just like Mestral said he would. He's dead.
no use. I can't kill a man with my hands. Go get, go get your bunch. Tell them to clear out. No more. They're all dead but me. Back to your village. Tell him white man gave Indian back his life. Those on for size. Hamilton's? Yep. Yeah. It's going to take a pretty good man or woman to fill him. You made him a promise. And I'm going to keep it. He's dead. Who's to know? Me. So Hamilton's what? He's taking you in after him. I guess you could say that. You once said that you'd walk a hundred miles just to kiss me. In a minute. Well, in this short distance, it shouldn't tire you. Is your partner Sam going to object? That partnership has been dissolved. Sam's nothing but a bad memory. I'm in business for myself now. Grab that rifle. They're not wearing war paint, so hold your fire. Make you present. White man, thanks, Indian. But your, your people, they went away. They left you. I walked back to my home over the mountains. But why? It is a custom of my people. A walk is part of the gift. The language of friendship. The senator tried to sow the seeds. All they needed was good ground to fall in. It's too bad he couldn't live to see it.
right, let's go. Take it easy. It's a long way to the next water. Well, maybe we ought to wait and give him a chance. We've been holed up a week. That's chance enough. He's running out on us. Money in his saddlebags will ease your conscience, Frank, and a two-way split will make it feel even better. Now. You! You shot nothing but holes in the sky. I meant to. different with a fistful of money in your jeans. Sure. Just don't ride behind me, Largo. Get up. Stage coming, Mr. Morgan. Well, your guess is as good as mine. It's four hours late already. We're getting on any gonna cut the breeze down, man. Senator Blackley over there, he brings his own. He's going along too. Uh -uh. Just can't seem to get away from the wind today, huh? Well, maybe the senators ain't so full of sand. I know where I can assure you, good people of Christian's flat, that we in Washington are aware of your problems out here. You have our sympathy. But we don't have your soldiers, Senator, to drive the Indians out of the territory. Soldiers are not the answer, sir. The answer is a better understanding. Your troubles out here will be settled when the Indians and the white men put aside their differences. You mean when the Indians run the whites out of the territory? Just look at Christian Flats. Those Redskins have made a ghost town out of it. Oh, now, my dear sir, you must real... Mademoiselle? Yes, Giselle. If you want my advice, I, I think we should go back to New York, where there are sidewalks, and where the men do not look at you as if they were hungry. Giselle, I do not pay you to give me advice. I pay you to hook up my dresses. Now go back to the hotel and stay with the luggage. Oh, c'est impossible. Well, Mr. Morgan? No cancellations yet, ma'am. But I told you, I've got to get to Laramie. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but without space on the stage, I can't sell tickets to anyone. Well, I don't happen to be just anyone. Oh, you sure don't, miss. There's only one Amy Clark from New York to Frisco. I remember you from Abilene. You and Sam had a good thing there. Well, that's open to debate. Didn't you and Sam ever get married? No, he proposed, but he didn't wait for an answer. Oh, uh, he was a fool not to take you for his bride. Sam wasn't a fool. He took me for something else. $27,700.20, to be exact. Oh, that's why he was in such a big hurry. He came through here a few days ago on his way to Laramie. You gonna meet him? Yes, I'm going to meet him. I'm looking forward to it. You see, that's why I've got to get on stage, Mr. Morgan. You simply must find a way to squeeze me in. 
Oh, it's going to be awful hot and crowded on that stage. And besides, what can I tell the other passengers? Tell them to use cologne before they leave here. Speaking of cologne... I'll bet you don't remember this. Uh -huh. Aveline. Uh-huh. <laughs> you tossed them to the crowd while you did your song and dance. Oh, worthless Joe, you handsome devil, you're the one who was to blame. <laughs> Night of February the 10th. <clears throat> Lilac perfume still lingers. You're putting too much strain on your imagination. Here. I'll give you a, a fresh one for the ticket. Uh, how many do you want? Three. My maid and minstrel, my accountant, is with me. It's going to be awful crowded on that stage if I can't talk somebody out of going. Besides, what if Sam ain't in Laramie? Oh, if he's not there, he'll be someplace. I'll find him. How much do I owe you? Uh, it'll be $15, and the, never mind the sense. <sighs> there is no problem that cannot be solved at a conference table. All that is necessary is to sit down, man to man, face to face, and talk these problems out. If I had my way, I would go back to Washington and insist that every senator, every congressman, visit your beautiful country here and see in person the problems that you people are faced with every day. Believe me, gentlemen, I know where am I speak. <laughs> Are you hurt, miss? No. Only my feelings, Senator. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Hamilton, ma'am. John Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, you look mighty done in, mister. Walk fur? About 40 miles. Somebody stole your horse? Shot out from under me. Is that so? I need one that's got some get up and go in it. Well, I got a mighty fine animal inside, mister. Never been known to spook. This here's a carriage horse, mister. Only critter in town for sale. Bet you have him for 40 bucks. Divide by two. Mister, you ring my heart. 20 bucks, take it or leave it. Good teeth, sound the limbs, no bruises. And there ain't no bruises on these either. I'll take it. Would have sold him for 10. You just did. <clears throat> you get these two in a swap? Nah, I wouldn't own them. They're plumb blowed out. Ain't fit for hat racks. Where are the two men that own them? Over in the hotel. One of them got bottle fever, threw away the cork. If you ask me, you'll have the beezy wheezies for six days. Is there a barber shop in town? Nope. Ain't enough business to pay a man to heat up the water. You mind if I wash up? Not if the horses don't. <laughs> As I was saying, gentlemen, you'll see the time when these plains of yours will be dotted with peaceful farms, prosperous farms, we have no wheat, we have no oats, we have no corn to feed our shoats. Have you no respect for a United States Senator, sir? Just keeping the two-party system alive, Senator. My opinion against yours. <laughs> There's a good answer for you, Senator. <laughs> Minstrel. Now, there's a lady with a queenly bearing. Yes, sir. And I'd sure like to be king. <laughs> Anything wrong, Miss Amy? Yes, the bartender told me Sam is headed for Canada. Well, then he won't be staying in Laramie very long. I know. That's why we've got to get there before he leaves. Hey, lady. I bet you and me have a little drink together. Mister, it ain't healthy to jump over the wrong fences. Can I uh, help you, ma'am? Oh, uh, yes. Do you run this livery stable? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, would you have any horses for sale or a rig to rent? No, ma'am. I just sold the last one to a fellow out back. Oh. Uh, do you suppose he'd be willing to sell it to me? It won't hurt to ask him. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. It's all right. I usually stand up when a lady walks in. Do you mind if I don't this time? Uh, please don't bother. I came to buy your horse. <laughs> You're sure going to be the best dressed rider in these parts and all that fall to off. I have to get to Laramie. So do I. I'll give you fifty dollars. Ma'am, if I walked in on you in a tub, I sure wouldn't be talking about horses. I'll make that seventy-five. Save your money, ma'am. Why don't we just ride double? Look, I need this horse. And if you were a gentleman... Which I'm not. Now, do you mind if I go ahead and wash? Not at all. While you're at it, why don't you wash this, too? If it can stand the shock. Son, you just made yourself a powerful friend. <laughs> Looks like you picked up a couple of slugs. Did I? Yeah, if he's been a mite higher, you'd be dead. Somebody thought I was. Famous Amy Clark, Toast to the West. Have you ever been west before, Senator? No, this is my first venture. You see, Congress is adjourned for the summer, and you might call this a trip without portfolio. In my small way, I'm trying to unite our peoples, the Indians and the whites. I hope your scalp is glued on tight. Have you ever met an Indian face to face? Only in a literary sense. You see, I happen to be a student of anthropology. So was General Custer, but didn't help him very much. Can I help you, mister? Are these two men still here? This one's upstairs in his room, sleeping it off. The other one's in the bar, playing poker. Yeah, it looks pretty dry around here. Yep, we ain't had any rain around here in a long spell. You found some somewhere. That drink's been watered. Forty miles, a man can get pretty mad, Frank. How you doing with my money? You figured it would lump up better in two piles, huh? A three-way split wasn't good enough for you. What have you got? Still running bad. Look, Largo did it, Johnny. Honest, it wasn't me, it was him. You could have stopped him. Well, he said you were figuring on giving it to us in the back. I was riding up front. Remember? 
Look, if you think I did it, why don't you shoot me? My gun's empty. I'm out of cartridges. This would be the right time. Go ahead. You always did have a white flag handy. This time you haven't got one. Not in here, boys. Please, not in here. It breaks things up too much. Don't holler to Largo for help. Try riding it out alone this time. It's going to be a gunfight. My parasols are there. Care to join me and watch it, Senator? All right, Frank. You're faster than I am, and you know it. Then we'll make it Queensberry. Start walking and count to ten. And try not to deal off at the bottom of the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten! What are you waiting for? Go ahead, shoot! You shouldn't have missed, Frank. I've got a free one coming. I'll take it my own time. You be on the watch out for it. Bring his horse. Keep riding, Frank. And don't ever let me find you. So long, boy. Someday I hope you can grow a backbone. Hello, Largo. I didn't figure to smoke you out so soon. What's the bottle doing out here? Liquid incentive. Winner take all. Guess we won't be needing this. No, no, no. Leave it there. Me and Mr. Banner do our best talking over a bottle. Do as he says. Leave it there. What kind is it, Johnny? Old Kentuck. 90 proof. You as thirsty as I am? Now, we'll see about that. That was a good horse you killed, Largo. I didn't mean it to be him. I know. You're still playing the safe odds, aren't you? What's so safe about standing up to you? I've got one bullet in my gun. You've got six. Five. Not all 
all savages paint their faces and wear eagle feathers. Look, he's alive! Never knew a man to fall for the same possum trick twice. Four flusher. Charity case. Nothing but charity cases. Who's gonna pay for this man's burial? You'll find three hundred dollars in your vest pocket. Take out for his funeral and send the rest to his nearest relative. Nearest relative, huh? Nephew, you just found yourself an uncle. You can keep the rest or bury it with Larkin. to a man who left town in a hurry. See if they get on the next stage east. That'll be about three dollars. Where'd you get it? The lady. I'll eat my own goose fried and fish oil if she didn't take it off her leg and give it to me. So help me. Did you ever play high card draw? 